What's up, dude? Uh -huh. How you doing? Good, good, good. good dog. Better now that you're here. Yeah, you know, I didn't see it, dude. My friend Otto. Otto, I'm Sam. Nice to meet you. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Grab a seat somewhere. Huh? Here to get educated. There you go. So there's some cookies and water from those kids over there. Where's the one of you? Back. I had a bean burrito from back there in Congo. Oh, yeah? They have like a stuffed, uh, uh, what is it, like a stuffed baked potato or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. You like carne asada on there? Hey, man, but it's been a while since I've seen you in person. Busy, you've been flying now. You like it up there? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Better weather. Questionable. I was going to say, he fixed it on Cummins. Nasty shit, man. I love winter up there. Do you? Exactly. Ugh. But I like the cold. I turned it today and it was wet. What did you say, Lobo? 17 degrees? Like, I'm like, I'll just be in April. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, they're early. That's cool. Oh, there's a lot of spurs flying. And what are you going over tonight? Tonight, dude, we're going to talk about out of state investing. Arizona's getting too expensive. It's like a ton of money out of state. Out of state? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on this uh, B R R R R page. Inverted. What BRRRR stands for? Buy, renovate, rent, rephrase. So buy, remodel, refinance, repeat. Very successful, like a lot of people do that out of state. They're going down ninety thousand dollar properties. Yeah, in you know some places. And my goal right now, I just want to buy. I want to get a like a three bedroom townhouse with a flag, live in it, rent a room or two out to travel nurses, remodel it, and then either keep renting it or rephrase. Get reappraised and pull the money out and go buy a horse property up there mm -hmm. and then build a house on it. But I want to start buying the property. The thing is, like, are there enough like fixer up up there? Yeah, they're, they're more expensive, but they're all, they're all over, they're just not cheap. Like, what? Like, what money would you have to pay? Half a million. Really? I was going to say the ones that are close to the college. The real small older homes are closer to the college that need to be remodeled or like four to five hundred. Yeah, you always be able to rent a house. Oh yes, yeah, colleges are a big town, right. and it's the tourism there, and <clears throat> you know, but it's like you know, the travel nurse nurses have a real hard time getting money because of their their contract for all thirteen weeks. So they end up either spending way too much money to have a place, or they're paying like some money up front to do a short term. Yeah. But <clears throat> half of the staff at the hospital up there is travelers. Oh, yeah. So that it, it's a revolving. The only way to get it. It's a revolving door of short term renters, and their money's guaranteed. Right. So if they get like a stipend for the money. Dude, they get. Like per diem kind of a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah. So I was talking about 
look at I am getting property with my brother up in Idaho. <clears throat> it's like close to a, a popular lake that people vacation at. And it's not that cheap, it's not that expensive. Yeah. But he's looking at buying property in Pueblo, Colorado, too, because that little town, tons of tourism, and it's cheap mm -hmm. to buy property there. So he's looking at buying a house there because he goes out there and sells solar. What one week a month? Oh yeah. Because he's tired of what he's paying. He's paying for an Airbnb, you know, for a week. Right. But then he sees how much, how many people are down there touring with tourism for. I don't know what's down there that is bringing people in, but that is packed. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find an Airbnb down there because they're all booked out. So maybe you buy a house and own it, and then. Pay for it. Airbnb it when he's not there. So, I just started working with people. I get it. <clears throat> that just looks good. You should get some. Do you guys own that uh, resort in, in Minnesota? We do. Like 28 single family there. Uh, like I can sell them all off. Like one of our extra strategies is like to be able to sell them off to single family houses. Oh yeah. Even though like we have like a commercial loan on them because we're still business. Like if I ever wanted to, I could just start selling them off individually and just fucking like quadruple my money. But it works. I mean, it works good as a business. I plan on holding them like I don't know there. A lot of maintenance. Like small maintenance. It's more like the cleaning staff and like because yeah. I mean you're really running like <clears throat> hotels. Right. And when people go to a hotel, you expect like fucking pristine. Right. Like yeah. If there's a fucking fly on the floor, man, like we hear about it, you know. And then they go on fucking Google. Oh, this place was a fucking shit show. I saw one fly. Yeah. Like, oh my god! In Minnesota, come on, dude. That's all there is is fucking mosquitoes. You know. Uh, how often do you go out there? So I tried to. <clears throat> Last year we had a goal of staying away from Arizona for a, a solid month, so we were out there, um, like just after the Fourth of July, uh, in August. I try to fly out like once a month for four days or something and then like spend a, a month but now we have two we'll at least spend at least a month out there again in the summer we still need to like we still run our real estate team and we don't really have like the people in place to take too much time off so if we're up there mice are playing down here you know like oh, yeah. nobody's fucking doing anything down here right um, Just gotta find the right people. We're looking at a. We just flew up to Washington on Monday. We're looking at like buying a feed store up there. Okay. Where at? Um, kind of like southeast of Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Little, it's called Graham County. Mm -hmm. Graham County Hay Market or something. The business does pretty good. It's like a. It's an older guy, not a business savvy guy. So like his books. Like one year he shows great profit, and the next year he doesn't show shit, and then the next year he's hiding like the shit that was on his PL statement in like 20 isn't the same shit that's on in 22, and they're different numbers. <laughs> like I don't think he's I don't think he's trying to hide stuff. It's like I I think like he switched accounts and he figured out one year he had to pay a fuck ton of taxes. So the next year he's like, I don't pay any taxes. So I showed that he made that much money. But you have to know, like, if you're going to get out of a business, like, three years in advance, because yeah. the last three years, you need to be frugal and don't spend shit and make your books yeah. look good. really, really good, or you know you're going to take in the short. So, yeah. You're not going to sell for much. Yeah, exactly. No, because, like, as an investor, when I go and look at the books, my bank, you know, I go get an SBA loan, they're going to say, what's the P and L? I show he didn't make shit, so like they're not gonna loan me right exactly. Right. They're like this dude kind of like a failing business, huh? Right. I lived up there for a while. 
in Washington. Mm -hmm. Just the I lived in the I lived in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. I worked in Morton in a paper mill about halfway up. Oh yeah. According to the like the all of Tacoma. Mm -hmm. I should start there. If I should come to Washington, so just up by Alpine Beach. You like it? You loved it. Too fucking liberal for me. I when I got out of the Coast Guard, my goal was to move back up there so I could hunt fish. No fucking way. I would never live there again. It depends on the area of the issue, though. It's like Arizona and East West. You're at the nerds or at Arizona. It's a big state. Yeah. But I'm like, he's a flag, so. Well, that's fucking dark blue. I'm with all the yeah. up there. All the, all the pink hair, purple hair people. So crazy. They are identified as people. People. Yeah, that's probably like my biggest hesitation. Is like everybody's moving out of Washington. It's like, well, why do I want to be moving into Washington? So they're still developing, man. Like right across the street, they're knocking down all these trees and going to build when ours are already building houses out there. Where are you That piece store? The piece store will be at. Well, I think like seven, like seven years, I think I could sell it for like three times as much, kind of run a business in between and make a little bit, but my end goal, like seven, maybe 10 years would be to offload that thing. You're trying to be able to compete with like the big bucks, like eventually PetSmart and all those people are going to go in there and track the supply and everything. Yeah, eventually we get, you know. But I'll sell, I'll fucking sell the store to PetSmart or the track your supply, go ahead, man. I don't need to fight with you, bud. Like, Paying my six mil, let's go. Right. They won't, they won't those box stores don't move in until there's a certain minimum population, you know, for them. But if you can get in there early. But if you get in there early. They let it build up around you. And then... He's got some good frontage road. Like the intersections he's at, he's about 300 yards off the intersection. But on the other side, like the more side of the intersection is... I mean, targets, Home Depots, and all that kind of shit. It's all it's, it's just moving that way. Yeah. So I'm just the secret to commercial success in commercial real estate is have a little bit, but be in the way. Like you don't have to own a thousand acres. You need to own one acre right in the center of that thousand acres. Like like that house out of Queen Creek on uh iron right fucking corner. Right on the corner iron yeah. talk to you. <laughs> Or, uh, you know, the, you know the Ellsworth did not see oh. There's got to be a story. Oh, that Walmart. There's okay. got to be a story about he's, he's asking for way too much money. Well, it's yeah. the same thing with that house right there in the yeah. center in downtown Chandler. But there's a time where you get too, like, too greedy and too pushy. And that's fuck it. We'll build around you. And then your house value goes to shit. Yeah. Because, like, if you had that dude on the corner, but there's a Circle K right there or a QT right there or something, like, ain't no pay won't buy that house. Right. So you can only push those big guys so much before, like, okay, fuck you, now we're just gonna put them Well, they may apply to somebody because they don't want them. They're, they're getting pushed around and getting you know, a lot of. Yeah, but there's a time where like you're gonna be surrounded by a certain K on the corner. Right. Well, there is. There's a key <laughs> street. Seven years. There's a third pot car dealership right behind them. Mm -hmm. Then you have all the big boxes right there. And so that's that house in downtown Chandler. That's exactly what happened. What's that little old lady that lives there? That's where I don't want to search that. <clears throat> and they they made some agreement with her where they were like, yeah, you can keep the house until you pass. And then once you pass away, you know, then the house would seize over to them and go over and trade over her lot. But they made that deal with like Oh, that and that was the plan all the time because that's kind of where, where it set up. They made that plan with her eight, nine years ago. She's in like her 90s. And she's still alive. She's still alive. Yeah. And they just built all the way around her. You guys, you guys own uh, Lisa Bob here? Yeah. We have, uh, we're the only office that comes upstairs. It was pretty cool. It's pretty good size. It used to be a Walgreens, didn't it? Wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. Walgreens or CBS. 
I got to find a seat if you can. <laughs> Dude, I didn't know you were doing this today. What are you doing today, apparently? Got an email out this morning. Oh, so you've been walking by? Yeah, so it's not just what is going on. <laughs> about to leave. We just got on the work and did that. Oh, man. Well, this is like when I leave work here. Right now? Yeah. And I just saw the signs as I was walking out. I didn't know this way was over. <laughs> I know. Hey, my other thing. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let us go. Try to plan a lot of years with you. Getting married on Sunday. Yeah. Yep. Uh oh. No. <laughs> well, we can do that. And then like cruise next Saturday. Oh yeah. Here at Or oh, oh, yeah. this year I'm here. Or be not here. Oh I heard her. Oh like it forces you to like the back of the game. Yeah, it's right. It really does. And that's what we've been doing, but I have to put on too much weight, bro, because like every every hallway or something is what they call the fruit of the fan. Really good. <laughs> You are not like the Mexican hallway, and then you walk down the Chiron hallway, and then wow. and I got ice cream 24 cents. <laughs> oh, it's just food all everywhere. It's not all. I think we're going to want a little bit of gym. <laughs> I think we're going to go to their town and just have a workout. <laughs> I'm going to play them anytime I'm like, well, that's not the whole problem. I see it. We're going to go. We're going to go. We're going to go. You're working with both of me like, Like one of the rooms for Finding you have yeah. answer or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you want some of that? I'll get some of Josh, what's up, bud? Josh Brown, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, and you can see and everything. Can you see the whiteboard pretty good? Uh, yeah, I can see the whiteboard all right. Can you see my hand? How many oh, hey, I'm number one. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, you can see it then. We're good. I've been number one in your life for a long time. Yeah, we love you a long time, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started then. We got a full house here. <laughs> well, you guys are going to get some. Badass one on one coaching about out of state investing. All right. So, this is, I think, this, is this our fourth class? Uh, I think our fifth. 
fourth or fifth. Anyway, we did a cool series. Uh, now you guys will get like all those back emails and stuff. You can go and rewatch them, okay. or probably hear like the first part of the year. I'll start like I'll start the series over again. Okay. Um, well, like just because you missed the first few, like you'll still like there's still a lot of shit to learn. Yeah, you know? um, so I'm open for like a ton of questions about how to state investing, um, and like the process. Neil, I'm gonna ask you some questions like as we go along. Okay. Some All right. So last week, Neil, do you remember what we talked about last week? It was uh, finance, huh? Right? Right. Financing. Yeah. Uh, Josh on Zoom, we don't have very many guys or people here in the office, so you're going to have to play along too, but so for last week, Josh, uh, like what was a good takeaway? Like what did you learn from our financing discussion? I think the biggest thing was all the different options. You know, you, when you go into something, you only think there's one option, but you know, you have a whole bunch of different options, different invest investment types. Right. Uh, did you like the, like, what, what did you like about, um, like, the hard money option? Um, what was the hard money option again? <laughs> so, like, you put less money down and they'll finance... Like what I like about it, you put, you know, 15 to 20% down and then they'll finance your whole remodel cost too. Mm -hmm. I, I think, it, I mean, that's always, you know, something I feel like is pretty good. You know, if, if you're willing to, you know, work, someone's willing to work with you and everything. So. Right. Our money doesn't normally go against like your debt to income ratio. It's a lot easier to qualify. Like they, they don't really pull like your W twos and all your financials. They just want to kind of know, like how much money do you make? What is the house worth right now? How much money are you going to put into it? And then what's it going to be worth after it's repaired? And then they'll loan you based on that. So it's pretty cool, pretty quick, pretty easy to get money. Higher interest rates, I would assume. A little bit higher, but you have it for a shorter term. So like most hard money companies will only loan you for like six, maybe nine months. So, you know, you got to give the money back within six months. You can't just sit there and freaking just eat that high interest rate. Yeah. On like a $300,000, $400,000 loan, you're probably paying a hundred bucks a day. Um, but you got to let that kind of motivate you. Like, oh man, hurry up, hurry up, try to get it done. We talked about budgeting for the financing cost center. So when you run a spreadsheet on a certain flip, you I have, a, I have a deal in the spreadsheet that, like cost of money or financing costs. And that's where you'll put in, you know, like how much it's going to cost you to borrow somebody's money. All right. So today yeah, we're going to talk about- I got a about... question. Huh? Hey, what would you call what we did on my house? Since I kind of, you know, I I financed it, but, you know, my mom, uh, my mom kind of, you know, we did that whole remodel. What kind, is that a hard money type of thing or? No, that's uh they call that illegal, what we did. <laughs> but we won't talk about it. <laughs> but we're talking about it. <laughs> uh, so your mom deal was more like a seller carry bag. So Josh's mom owned the house. Josh bought the house from his mom. But his mom didn't know any money on it. So she refinanced it and basically pulled out all the money and then gave it to Josh. And then Josh fixed up, like basically almost tore down, gutted this entire house and added square footage to it, all that kind of stuff. I mean, all brand new cabinets, everything. And now he refinanced it. Now the loan's in his name, but his mom was able to carry it, refinance it, give him a chunk of money to help pay for the remodel. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so we're talking about out of state investing. Like what are some of the myths? Have you guys even like thought of out of state investing, like what are some of the myths that you hear? Whether they're good or bad. <clears throat> don't know what you're getting. Huh? Don't know what you're getting. Don't, don't know what you're getting. getting. Yeah. Okay. What's a good one? Anybody else? Josh, you got one? No. 
<clears throat> so like some of the myths that I hear is like, how do I know if it's a good deal? Um, yeah, you don't know the area. Yeah, you don't know the area, right? Like you don't want to buy a house like in the song, you be able to rent that out. Um, a lot of people think like, I have to like buy and I, I have to like touch and feel this house. Like I need to put eyes on it. I need to like walk through it or like, I don't want to buy it. Some people think like, oh man, like how am I going to make a, make a repair on it? You know, what happens if like the water heater goes down and I'm, I'm 2000 miles away. I own several investment properties here in Arizona and it's, it's still a phone call to me. Like I'm still going to call somebody and hey, Nathan go, you know, my AC and 10 P went down. I, I don't go to the house. Well, shit, I got to go to the house now. And I walk through and go, oh, yeah, the AC is broken. Well, I still got to call somebody to go fix it. So what does it matter if my phone call goes 10 miles or my phone call goes 1,500 miles? Nothing. It's still a phone call. I'm still not going down there and touching the house and feeling it and looking at it every day. I don't drive by it every day. My goal is to not ever drive by it. Every time I got to go over there, it's a cost to me, right? Um, so like you hear a lot of that. Uh, people just don't think it's doable like financing might be different that's all just a bunch of myths so I'm going to try to walk through some of these uh, and my experience is really teach you like the pros and the cons what we should really do especially as like a first time investor and then you can really start picking up your confidence and buying like several 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 houses out of state okay? it's doable I swear to God I promise Okay, so like, why buy out of state? This first one, Arizona guys, like it or not, we are turning into California. Yep. We are turning into California. There, so we hit a huge boom during the COVID period, right? People started working from home. They were able to move anywhere and everywhere. What was also cool about it is you had a crazy low interest rate which allowed people to really qualify for houses like at a, at a much higher price point. And what that did is that drove up the price here in Arizona. So now like a normal person, if you were going to buy a three bedroom, two bath house 15 years ago was probably a hundred, $150,000. Well, with cool inflation and then COVID and the low interest rates and everything we've been dealing with over the last 20 years, even like the last three to five years, because now that shit is like $500,000. My prediction, and again, like I told you guys, try not to time the market, try not to predict the market. Everything I've been hearing like in the real estate forum and, and area is that this time next year, the interest rate is going to be back down like the fives. Might even hit the fours again. So as interest rates lower, what happens to price? But skyrockets again, right? And it is going to take off. When the crash happened in 07, <clears throat> people didn't have a lot of money back then. Like money was hard to get. People were only making like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. Now people are making eighty, ninety, hundred plus thousand dollars a year. Like an entry level job now. Like you can't even get somebody at McDonald's to work less than twenty, twenty dollars an hour. That's forty grand a year. But that's entry level piece of crap job, right? So now you have people that are going to come across low interest rates, but people that have made $100,000 for the last five years and been saving it and stocking it away, they have good credit, they make good money, they're going to qualify for crazy amounts of money now. So with the low interest rates and people having cash, ready for this bubble to burst, they are going to buy in and they are going to dive in so fast. Arizona prices are going to skyrocket. So if you want to buy in Arizona, at least like the greater Phoenix area, I'm giving you like eight months. You have eight months left to try to buy here or you'll never ever be able to buy here again. That's my biggest fear. Like it's, it's going to turn into California. <laughs> so Arizona gets too expensive, which leads to the next one. Like the entry to the market is too high. It's too risky. Like if you want to buy a flip, we bought a flip uh, like nine months ago in Phoenix. Neil worked on it. It was nasty. It was disgusting. Like down there, total tear down, gut of the whole thing. We we bought it for five hundred fifty thousand dollars, like a fucking knockdown for five hundred fifty thousand dollars. I put a hundred grand into it. Yeah, we sold it for six eighty or six something like that. We netted like forty fifty thousand dollars, which is great. But 
I had a five hundred fifty thousand dollar loan plus a hundred thousand dollars on the cash out there. That's a six hundred fifty thousand dollar risk of liability. Which leads to the next one. Like when you go out of state, other than California, Arizona, Texas, and Florida, those are probably the four highest like priced states in the country right now. Are those four? So there's 46 other states that you can go to and and have like a lower entry and a lower capital like out of pocket cost, right? So we're in. You know, it's kind of the story, but we have. This last year, I invested in three houses in Ohio, like outside of Toledo, Ohio. First one I bought was $68,000. I put, put roughly $20,000 into it, and it's on the market. It's under contract right now at one fifteen, dollars right? So I, I netted like $20,000. My hope was to rent those out, but it turns out like the people in Ohio aren't the best people, either credit, criminal history, or they've just been evicted a million times. So I don't want to do it. I'm pulling out of Ohio, going somewhere else. But it was cool because like if I if I did like a hard money on it on $68,000, 20% of that, uh, roughly $14,000, right? When I bought the house for $550,000 in Arizona, 20% down, what's that? $110,000. I mean, yeah, I made 40 grand out here, but I had to go out of pocket $110,000. I made, I made $20,000, $25,000 in Ohio, and I came out of pocket $14,000. Like, that's, that's <clears throat> it's huge. Way lower risk. Way lower risk. And, like, what's well, the stop? Like, though, too. Hmm? I mean, the market here is insane. Yeah, so, like, here you have, like, the peaks and the valleys that really spike up, but then they really crash down. Where like in Ohio, you can look at trends, you can look at market trends over the last hundred years, but like if you take like the last 30 years, they're they're more of a like a like a wave kind of thing where Arizona is this and it's every day, it's almost every week the market changes, right? It's just the last few months the market's just been changing this way, but like one weekend of the next in Arizona, like as a realtor being in it full time, you really see like one weekend you'll have insane amount of activity and then you're like oh great my open house next weekend is going to be kick ass so you do the same thing the same house the next weekend you know you get nobody walking through right you have a bunch of peaks and valleys where out of state you don't appreciate like arizona appreciated last year in 2021 alone 18 percent in one year in one year 18 percent a normal healthy very very good market is three to five percent a year. We went 18, right? That is a that is an uphill climb. We're like in Ohio, still like they probably peaked at like a six percent increase, right? Now, what the market's doing right now out there, like a 10% drop to them is ten thousand dollars in price off a of, off a of hundred fifty thousand dollar house, maybe it's fifteen thousand dollars. How much would it be if your house went down 10%? Um, Probably eighty thousand, probably. So somebody in Ohio took in the shorts fifteen thousand. Dude just dropped eighty grand, right? And that's only ten percent. The market since July has probably gone down like eighteen to twenty percent so far. So Neil has almost lost like one hundred sixty grand. Where me in Ohio, I've only lost like thirty grand. There's, there's a lot less liability out there, a lot less risk. One of the biggest goals. In investing in state, out of state, doesn't matter, is to mitigate your risk. Real and true investing is not risky, right? Because you've done all your homework and you've taken, you've taken a huge risk and you've protected yourself by budgeting correctly. You've protected yourself by borrowing money correctly. You've protected yourself by doing your homework on um, can I buy the house right? You know, how much does it cost to repair it? What's the ARV, the after repair value? You mitigate that risk even more. And then, you know, I chose the right contractors, mitigate the risk even more, you know, to where it's buying a house out of state is less risky than getting in the car and driving home tonight, right? Like when I make an investment, I feel more comfortable about what my investment was than I do driving home, you know, getting hit by like a drunk driver. That's how confident I am in, in making a decision investing, whether it's a go or a no-go. 
but you have to be confident either way. When you do your spreadsheet and your spreadsheet tells you not to buy the house, you are not going to buy the house, right? We talked about that. Like you have a very specific buy box. And if you're, if those parameters, the spreadsheet, the money, the financing, the deal, the house, whatever is not in your buy box, you are not going to try to convince yourself to take on that deal. You will get your ass kicked every time. It's Murphy's Law, guaranteed, right? Okay. Um, like same if not better, you know, rate of return as like Arizona. Um, this is more for like a, a long-term hold, right? So we have we have a house in Queen Creek off Ellsworth and what is that like Queen Creek or something over there? The bridges or something. I don't know what it's called. There. I probably profit like three, four hundred bucks a month on it, but I had to pay, you know, four hundred fifty thousand dollars for it. Where the house in Ohio that I paid seventy four, and I put fifteen, so eighty five grand total. I I net three hundred and twenty five bucks a month on that, but I was out of pocket twelve grand, and I still you still make the same amount of money. But my down payment in Queen Creek was eighty five grand. My down payment out there was twelve grand. Long term hold, I'm still making three hundred. $400 passive income, right? Like the money, it just pencils out better by going out of state. But there are a lot more challenges. Um, what's cool about it is it opens up a lot of opportunities. <laughs> what I mean by that is like a scenario, if, if you bought and flipped and you hold one house and you were able to refinance and get all your money back out, why can't you buy one more? Okay, do the same thing. Now you've done it twice. Why can't you do it four times? Okay, now that you've done four houses like that, why can't you do eight houses like that? If you've done eight, why can't you do 40? If you've done 40, why can't you do 100? Right, like it really just blows up your, your area of opportunity. Like your first two or three flips and investments that you take down are gonna be like super, you're gonna be super nervous. You're gonna be like, oh man, did I really do like the right thing? Did I make the right decision? But then like, as you get confident and you learn something from every single flip, like I still as day, we've done we've done over 40 flips or investment properties that we've fixed up and still to this day. Shit, okay, the next one I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do that. Like you always learn something better and you really start to fine-tune to where you can really start making some serious cash. But what's cool about uh, like the opportunities that it gives you, like let's say you owned 10 houses in uh, Illinois. You got a hundred grand in equity in all of them. You can refinance that. You can pull a million dollars out with a million dollars down payment. You'd be able to buy like a mass, like a like a apartment complex that has say fifty doors to it, like two bedroom, one bath. Right? That's a small house. We have fifty all at one time in one area under one roof. Like the spreadsheet is all the same. You're all you're gonna put a budget together. Or you're gonna put a you're gonna put a value to the apartment complex on what it costs, and then you're gonna do the same spreadsheet that I give you here. It works on one door and it works on a thousand doors. It works the same way. You're gonna budget how much it's gonna cost you to fix that thing up, and you're gonna say, "When will I buy it? After I repair it, can I make money on it? If you can, yeah, you can pull the freaking trigger on it, right? What's cool about it though is that you just you're fixing up a hundred or fifty houses right in a row, same layout. You can buy stuff at bulk and you have 50 doors that you're going to start making money on right away, right? Uh, so it's just, it's really cool how it opens up opportunities. It opens up opportunities for like passive income, um, opens up opportunities for like refinancing. Like you can refinance the 10 houses that you own to buy more houses if you need to. Uh, and you get the passive income from it. Uh, Nathan, we'll put you on the spot. And I don't know if you thought about this or not, but like our first class, we talked about like you have to have a goal, right? I think everybody, as human beings, we all have to have a goal. We all have to have something to look forward to. So, like when you were when you were 15, what did you look forward to? 16. What happened at 16? Got your driver's license, right? Yeah. Okay. So then when you were 17, what did you look forward to? 18. Moving out. Moving out, getting your own place, being an adult, right? Being able to vote, whatever. Buy cigarettes? I don't know. Then at 18, when you were when you were 20, just the day before 21, what did you look forward to? Bar. Going to the bar, right? So like there's always, and then now that you have like a corporate job, what do you look forward to? Retirement. 
Friday. Oh, Friday. <laughs> Friday, right? Friday is a freaking miniature holiday, bro. <laughs> But yeah, and then you look forward to like retirement, but you have to have a goal. So if I had to put you on the spot, what is the what is the amount of money that you want to live on like per month when you get older? There's no judgment, bro. It's your number. It could be it could be a thousand, it could be twenty thousand, be fifty thousand, be a million. I don't care. It's your number. What? I think uh five six grand a month. By six grand a month. Okay, so if you if you want to live that passively, you're making three hundred dollars a month off rental property. You have to own twenty houses. Right. Twenty houses is totally doable, right? Twenty houses. Like if you if you're here, all those other classes, like you definitely you can start putting it together. You really understand. You can definitely do twenty houses. I think if you wanted to, like, what would what would twenty thousand dollars do for you a month? Oh, what would the difference of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per month do for you? Five five grand a month would keep me content, like in the state that I live in. Right. Twenty grand a month would let me travel the whole. Right. So twenty grand, you need fifty, sixty houses. You've already bought twenty. Twenty is going to get you to five or six thousand. You've already bought twenty. Why can't you buy forty or fifty? Right. Ah. Uh, anyway, we can we can talk about that a little more. Okay. Oh shit, man. Can you guys see that? Yeah, see that? Okay. Let's just lie out here. <laughs> okay, so like where do I go? Like if you're like, yeah, man, I want to start investing out of state, which like I highly recommend. Just because again, like Arizona's just getting too tight. Arizona's getting too tough, it's too competitive, it's too, it's too risky, right? Uh like even on your first one, would I go out of state on my first one? Honestly, if you partner with me, yes, I would do it. Um, but like your risk of going out of state, like, so I'm gonna give you a little heads up. We're, I'm probably gonna go to like Wichita, Kansas. Yeah, I know a guy. I know a guy in Wichita, Kansas. He owns a hundred houses. He started five years ago, and he now owns a hundred houses out there. He was actively working a deal when I met this guy at a at a big uh, Keller Williams conference, and I was sitting right next to him, and we just got to talking about it. And he was showing me these text messages as the guy is texting him. You know, how, like it has like the yeah. bubble, like somebody's typing. Like he didn't just plan this shit out. Like it was, dude was giving him a deal right then and there. And I was talking to him about it because I, I invest here in, in Ohio. I was like, dude, what's up? Like, where are you at? And he's like, oh, check this out right here. I have a deal right now. He shows me this three bedroom, two bath house. It's probably 1200 square feet. Uh, needs some repairs. Like it, it's a gut. Right, like new kitchen, new bathroom, new flooring, new paint, new doors. It's a gut. Twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars to purchase this house, and it wasn't like burned up in the hood. Like not. It, it was. It was a beat up older house that just needed some love. Right, the same type of love, Neil. You do every freaking day that I would do every time on a flip down here. But a flip down here would cost me a hundred thousand dollars to do that same flip. So I said, okay, man, like $12,000 kind of buys me this house or just the down payment? He goes, no, it buys you this house. The dude said for $12,000, I can have this house. So $12,000, and he has made up in his area. He said, I could, I could get a contractor all day long. I don't think I would put $30,000 into that house. So you're in $42,000. I said, well, what's like the, what's the ARV? Like, what would I be able to sell that, that same house for after I fix it up? $90,000 to $110,000. So you will be able to refinance and get all your cash back out. And I said, what would it rent for? 11 to 1200 bucks a month. So your mortgage on $80,000 would probably be 600 bucks, 640 bucks a month. But you're renting it out for 11 to 1200 bucks a month on an initial investment that costs you $12,000 to do. Like, where is your risk in that? There's really no, and then you're going to refinance it and you're going to do it again because that wasn't just, he said, Tim, these are, he's like, yes, it's one of the cheaper properties. Well, like when you say more expensive, he goes, I don't think I've ever spent more than a hundred thousand dollars on a house. I was like total price. Yes. Total price. Never over a hundred thousand dollars. He's, he's within 15 and a hundred thousand dollars. He's got a hundred rentals. He has a hundred houses. I know a dude, 
the a guy that tipped me off to this, uh, his, his name is shit, not Hen, uh, Henry. Henry's his last name. He's got a weird first name. Anyways, Henry's his last name. Um, he owns three hundred houses in uh, Kansas City, Kansas, and a little bit in Missouri. He's refinanced all those when interest rates were down like two, two and a half percent. He pulled out all the equity he can, and now he owns like four massive commercial buildings. He owns like a huge sky rise up there. He owns some apartments. He owns so many investment properties. He owns three construction crews. And he said they won't even be able to start on these apartment complexes for two more years because he has so much shit. He has so many houses that he bought. Like he can't even get people in there to flip them fast enough. So he owns a hundred houses that are just sitting vacant right now. And then we've, I've been out there. Like he, it's, it's for real. Um, so yeah, like where do you go? You can almost go anywhere. Anywhere other than those four to five states that I mentioned first. Georgia probably the same exact way. I have, a, I have a brother and sister-in-law, my youngest brother, Austin, and his wife. Uh, both of them are getting their real estate license right now. They live in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Yeah. She sent me a, she sent me a listing like two days ago um, of a house that was on 12 acres, like woods, half of it was like half flat grass or whatever. 12 acres, like 20 minutes outside of Raleigh, Durham, which is closer than it is from Queen Creek to the Sky Harbor Airport. Is, is 45 to an hour. You're 20 minutes away, 12 acres. The house needs to be fixed up with 12 acres. $229,000 was the ticket, was the price tag on that thing. Yeah, I'd have to go in there and gut it. Yeah. But she's already got, she's got five contractors lined up for me when I fly out there to the interview. We're going to talk about that in a second here. But I can buy it at 240. Again, your down payment's like 40 grand on it. Hard money, they will pay for your remodel cost. But she said once they fix that thing up, it's it's probably closer to five to six hundred thousand dollars. So like I'm I'm in forty five thousand dollars when I'm done remodeling it, I'm gonna flip it. There's potential in there to make two hundred thirty thousand dollars, like in in two or three months, right? It seems like that. You gonna have to sit on that one again. No, because I'm gonna this time. Yeah, that's right in there. Um, so just in like five minutes, he talked about, oh, Georgia's like that. Oh, Tennessee's like that. You just heard Wichita, Kansas is like that. Know. Raleigh, Durham is like that. Everywhere but the four states that I mentioned. So there's 46 other states that you can do this shit at. So to say like, oh man, like, and I even asked this guy that owns a hundred houses in Wichita. I was like, bro, what if I want to come in and I want to own like one or 200 houses too? Like, would we, would we ever like step on toes? He said, Sam, I probably wouldn't even know you were there. Like there's just so there's so many houses, there's so many opportunities. He's like, bro, you would just, you would come across more opportunities than you could than you could afford. Like the opportunities are out there if you start looking for them and you have people to start finding them for you. And again, we're gonna talk about that in a second. So like what like like ways that when I went out of state and and again like I I tried a lot of this on my own. So a lot of this comes from like personal experience. A lot of it comes from like trial and error. There's a lot of shit that I learned. So I'm trying to tell you like what I did, but not trying to be the parent here and tell you like how to live your life without making the mistakes that I made. So like one way you follow like big business, you find out like you have a buddy who works for Intel, um, Amazon, Ford, Chevy, you know, one of the big auto dealers or something. Ask those guys. They're in meetings. They get their they get their company newsletter. Hey, we're opening a big plant in um the next one Ford is opening is in, uh, I believe it's Louisville, Kentucky. I know, I know a huge investor guy that's going to Louisville, Kentucky, because Ford is building their electric vehicle truck plant out there in Louisville, Kentucky. So if you were right here on investing, you would probably start heading and looking at Louisville, Kentucky, right? So you're going to follow those big guys. Why do you follow the big guys like Amazon, Ford? They're not going out of business. They're not going out of business. They're supplying like 20,000 jobs. Bringing people into the area. Literally. Bringing a shit ton of people in the area. It's a good, safe industry. Uh, what I like about it too, right here, they do the work. What I mean by that is like when Amazon goes to buy a property, do you think that they just kind of like, Look at the globe and then go like right there. Okay. 
Buckeye, Arizona. No, they have a team that they pay millions of dollars every year to start researching all this shit. Where should we move to? Where are the good jobs at? Where's the growth at? Like, where are, where's like that medium income level people at? Where are all those employees that kind of rank in that, you know, maybe 18 to 42 age range? Where are those people that are used to making, you know, anywhere from 25 grand up to 60 grand? Like, don't, where's all that shit at? And then that's how they start picking out where they're going to rock one of their massive Amazon plants. So then if you think, like, if you learn that, hey, Amazon's starting to build right here, let's go do research in that area right there and see if I need to be buying some houses and flipping those suckers, right? You'd never go wrong with that. Uh, universities, universities are huge. Um, any university, you don't have to be a new university, any university. Uh, you might have to pay, like, to get super close to a university, <clears throat> you might have to pay a little bit over what the house is really worth. But again, like you have to look at like that rental market and see if your mortgage, you know, if you'll get that back by what your rent payments would be, right? It's not son, man. Well, they rent they rent from one in Georgia, in Statesboro. Uh -huh. That George Southern University. It's got a kitchen, living room, and it's got four rooms. And each and one of them paying six hundred dollars a month for the rental on that. And I guarantee you that. And it's probably like a shack. Yeah. Like it's not a Scottsdale house. It's a nice house. It's a decent nice house. Okay. But I don't know. College kids living in it. Right. But, but, you know, and I, I went out there and then every one of them got paid $1,200 deposit. Every one of them kids. And they ain't getting it back because mm -hmm. that house was like, it's, it's he went out there and asked me to fix some drywall holes. I'm looking around going, these drywall holes ain't, he ain't getting no money back. Right. Right. So, yeah. So yeah. It's... So when you get close to the university, like you have the kids that'll pay it, um, and you know they're going to move out in the summertime. So then you have time to either put it on a VRBO or you have time to fix it up, and get it ready for the next year. You got to you got to time like how you make those like rental agreements. You don't want to if you're really close to a college, you don't want to start like a a lease in like November. Because like if somebody signs it for a year, it comes back up in November next year. Well, the students are already in school, man. They've already picked their place to live. So you want like June 30, 30th, you're out. So July 1, I can start a new lease. You know, the good kids start looking for houses early, right? You can get their parents to co-sign for them. You can get the deposits down. If you're going to do long-term rentals, especially close to a college, you want like tile. You want undestructible stuff. Right, like you're not putting carpet in there because every single year you're gonna replace carpet. Tile, we have tile in that Tempe house. You've been in a Tempe house where we're in the AC, tile everywhere. I I didn't like spruce up the kitchen. Like it's clean, it's decent. Yeah. Well, like college kids don't care. They don't need like brand new white rocker panel freaking kitchen. They don't need like the granite. No, they like good, good enough to get them in there. They're, 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 they don't care what it really what it looks. Like. Yeah. And their their parents are going like, oh man, look, I don't have to buy like a, a six thousand dollar parking pass now because you can literally walk to ASU. You can walk to whatever university that is, right? So you want to get as close to a to the university as you can. And if you can't get in walking distance, get in biking distance. If you can't get in biking distance, try to get close like car distance. Yeah. And then after that, like once you're once you're more than like a 10 minute drive to that university. You're you're out of the college market. Right. Now you're out to, you know, families, long-term rentals, and then you just make lease agreements any time of year, whenever you get people in there. But like again, if you follow a university, you get close to the university. There's really there's some there's some good honey holes yeah, the, in universities. There's there's places where they live. They've got I mean, here's look like a neighborhood here, and it's all college kids that live in all these houses. Yeah, and that's probably. And like you said, 15 minutes from the school. Right. So when you look at those, what's your minimum monthly profit that I try to I try to net that? I try to net 20% more than what my mortgage is. So if my mortgage is a thousand bucks, I try to safely rent it out for 1200 Obviously, more is better, but my minimum is like 20%. What that is, is that protects me by 20%. So the rental market could crash 20%, and I would still at least break even. Um, 
And like a market like this, where like the housing prices are, are coming down quick, the rental market is, is still decently strong. Um, but like I, you try to get as far away from break even as you can, but like my minimum buy box is 20%. So if I can't net 20% passive income every month, then I'm, I'm out. I'm not going to buy it. I won't buy it. Obviously, you want to make as much as you can. Um, the house that we have in Tempe, I mean, I think we're netting like 800 a month right now off of that one. Uh, there was a time like three years ago that we were netting like 1200 bucks, but like the rental market slowed down a little bit. Uh, anyway, but we're right by... ASU downtown, the Tempe campus, right? Uh, so universities are really cool. Another way like you can research it after you've kind of figured out like where these big guys are going, you want to research like those cities and the best way to do is like good old Google, right? You get on Google and you can say like, what's the crime rate for Wichita, Kansas? Uh, what's like the growth rate? Like what are the big industries moving in? Like how many people are there? Uh, what's like the median age? What's the median income level look like? How many houses are there? What's the median price? What's the rental price? Um, there's so much opportunity and, and research that you can do just on Google that you can feel even better about like paying more time and more attention into that area to, to possibly invest. Um, like, crime, like to me, to me, like crime rate is huge. Crime rate is, is super, super big because if you're in like a high crime rate area, like who are you going to attract that wants to live in that area, right? I don't care what color you are. It doesn't matter. But if you're willing to live in that area, you're probably that type of person. You're going to hunt down rent checks. You're going to be kicking people out all the time when you go down there at night to kick somebody out or whatever. Like you, you in the hood. I won't be in the hood. So crime rate is huge to me. The next thing is like affordable housing, like What's my risk or entry to the market? Is it $70,000 or $700,000? If, if Amazon or whoever is moving into Wichita, Kansas, I'm like, yeah, that's great. They're going to bring 15,000 jobs in the area. But if I look at the median house prices out there and it's $700,000, next, wow, shit, that's Arizona. Might as well invest here, right? So don't be afraid. Just because Amazon's going there, do your research. And if you're out, you're out. Like If you pull the numbers, they don't work for you. Don't go there. Go, there's, there's thousands of other cities you can go to. Um, weather is also like big to look at because why would weather be important in making a decision on an investment property? Damages. Damages in your insurance, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to go in Florida right off the coast, like I don't even know if you can get like flood or hurricane insurance anymore. And if you do, probably 20 Gs a month. Mm -hmm. Like right off the bat, just for stupid insurance, right? So don't go there. No, Georgia, you gotta have flood insurance if you're not even in flood zone. 100%. So, again, like you gotta do research like that because now you could pay, I don't know what flood insurance is out there. Like it could be affordable. Like if it's a if it's a normal standard thing, people are used to it, put that in your budget. And if you can still make 20% on it, pull the trigger, dude. Go move there. That's fine. Keep your insurance up, dude. You'll be just fine. If it floods, great, man. I get to rebuild a brand new house. I can probably rent that shit out for even more now. And my insurance company paid for it. Great, man. Uh, so that's what I like about like the weather. Um, easy to travel to. This is just like my personal privileged way of thinking. Like if I got to jump on four planes to get there, I'm out, dude. I don't. So like I didn't, I didn't learn this until I invested in Ohio. And there is not a direct flight into Ohio. I have to stop at least two other areas. So it takes me an entire day to get to you know, Ohio. Just another thing that's just pissing me off. And okay. So if I can't get a direct flight out of Phoenix, Arizona to that area, I'm out. I'm not going. I'm not going. Um, any questions, comments on this about like finding the area? We're going to get into some more stuff here. here soon. Okay. Who do I need? Like this. this uh, I, I can't tell you like in life, in business, in real estate. I know we talked about what are the three most important things in real estate. I'll start with the same letter, L. Yeah. Location, 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 right? That's the most important thing in real estate. The most important thing in business, either owning a business, running a business, it's 
three things and it all starts with the same letter. It all sounds the exact same. It's fucking people, 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 people. It's not, it's not always like how deep you can buy them. Like what, what good is it to buy a house deep in Wichita, Kansas, if you don't have a realtor that can represent you, if you don't have a realtor that can help you negotiate, if you don't have a contractor that you can trust to go over there and fix this place up. What like what good is it to buy a really good investment if you don't have like a friend who can go like drop keys off or go take a picture or go grab a measurement or go make sure the contractor locked the door or you know hey there's a bad hailstorm I saw on the news go check out my house make sure everything's cool like all of those are people so what good is it to buy a really good investment in Ohio if you don't have anybody that can support your business out there so like I know we talked about like where and how to find out where you would go. But like, I would almost put who I know and what areas are they in above, above where I need to go. Like you talked about Georgia, you got family in Georgia still. Yeah. Um, I would, that would probably honestly be one of the first places that I would look is like, where, where does my brother live? Or, or where does my sister live? And then I'm going to, you know, do like a 50 mile radius and like, hey, can I buy houses in this area? Blah, blah, blah. And if I can, I would call my sister or brother and say like, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. Like, can I count on you for like a one off situation? Right. Like if I have somebody I can trust out there, that's more valuable than going to another state that I don't know anybody. at. So like I would find out like where your people are at and then try to build a business in that area. Um, and that's going to require you to like go through your phone book, go on Facebook and say like, hey, man, who like if you found out Louisville, Kentucky is where you want to go before because Ford is going out there and they're going to start 20,000 plants. I would get on Facebook tonight and be like, hey, man, who do I know that lives in Louisville, Kentucky? Post it on Facebook and see what happens. You'll, I mean, people you don't even know be like, oh, dude, I got a brother that lives out there. Great. Let me get his phone number. Boom. And then you call him. Hey, man, what do you do for a living out there? Oh. A painter or whatever. Oh, great, dude. Great. This is what I'm trying to do. So you find the people. Uh, that's really like where I would start and what I would do. I've learned that like it's the people um, that are very, very successful. Because like I said, again, other than the four or five states that I mentioned at the very beginning, you can go pretty much anywhere and get a better deal. So like now you just find out where your people are at and then go start trying to build a business in that area where those people are at. Three most important things in business. Yeah, absolutely. Business. <laughs> Nick, you're out there. <laughs> okay, so you're going to build your team. That's the who. There's a very cool book. I don't know if you guys are readers or not. It's called Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. Are you a reader? Are you? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess. I want you to read a book. It's called Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. Okay? Change your life. It talks about who it is in your life that you need and also who do you need to be to attract the better people in your life. It's a very cool book, super easy to read. It took me like three weeks, so it should take you like 20 minutes. Like I read like a third grader. You can ask, ask Josh hey, Redwall. I read like a third grader. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Who Not Hell? Who Not Hell by Dan Sullivan. It's a very good book. Very good book. Okay, so like building your team. Who are the most important people in that? So again, I talked about like, it's your friends and your family, right? Who do you know that are in those areas? As long as they're not in Arizona, Florida, Texas, California, dude, find somebody, become very, very good friends with them. Rekindle a relationship. You are going to bring them like opportunity. Like there's ways that you can, you can pay them back. There's ways like having a conversation with these people. They might want to do something with you. They might want to partner up with you. And they'll say like, yeah, man, like, dude, I'll, I'll be your project manager. I'll be your boots on the ground for 5% of, of profits. Or dude, you let me just in on 5%. I'll do like, I'll be your dude. To me, that is worth it. I make that deal all day long, right? You need to find somebody that you can trust that will do like the odd and ends, like run of the store for you. Hey man, go take a picture of this real quick. Hey, the, the contractor said that he left the window open. Will you run over there and shut the window for me? That type of thing, right? The one-off guy. Um, in green, one thing I learned, like you are going to be a burden to people. You are going to be a pain in the ass to somebody. I guarantee you. You need to be upfront with that. At the, like at the very beginning of that conversation, you need to let them know, bro, I am going to call you on a weekend 
and I need you to go check this house out for me. I am going to call you and say, hey, will you run a lockbox over there? Hey, will you run and let this plumber in because he locked his keys in the door and I need somebody to go over there and let him in? Like, I don't know when, but I just know at some point I'm going to be a pain in the ass. Do you, do you realize that? Are you willing to work with me on that? Like, I'll, I'll kick you 25 bucks every time you go over there or whatever, right? Um, let them know that and be upfront with it. You can form like formal agreements with them if you want, just so they know what you expect and like what they're going to get compensated for or whatever, whatever that deal is. And you really, really have to treat them right. I got you. They're doing you like a super solid favor. Like even if you had to pay somebody 50 bucks to go let a contractor in because he left a cell phone in there and locked himself out, how expensive would it be for you to fly out there and do the same thing and then fly back? Is it worth 50 bucks to do that? 100%, paying 50 bucks all day long, right? So you got to treat them right and they'll they'll treat you right. Uh, the next, and I suggest trying to have like a minimum of two. One, if somebody's out of town and you need something to happen or two, that person gets like tired and frustrated with you and they're like, dude, I'm out. Like you're way too much high maintenance. You're way too much a pain in the ass. You only pay me 20 bucks to go over there. I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. Great, I got I got your brother that's going to do it for me, right? Or I got another friend that's going to do it. So try to find like a minimum of two people out there. Uh, real estate agent. Uh, even if you were a real estate agent, I, I am an agent and I still found an agent in that area. What's cool about an agent, if, if you're not from that area, hopefully they are, they know the areas and they'll tell you where you want to buy and where you don't want to buy. Same thing with these people. Like if those people live in that area, they're going to be able to tell you a little more. A, a real estate agent has to be ethical about a certain area or subdivision. Like legally, I can't, I can't defamate the 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 neighborhood. Like if I know that like this area is known for a certain crime or a, or a certain ethnicity or a certain whatever, that like you don't want to. I can't ethically tell you. Oh, there's a lot of white people that live here and like they always jack your shit jack your rims jack your radio i can't tell you that i can tell you hey here is the website where you can go and look at the crime rates in that specific area wink fucking wink go look at it <laughs> but i can't tell you like no you can't move but can your friend tell you like hey dude there's some sketch people over there really selling meth and shit he can tell you that and that's who you want because this dude will say like, no, bro, that, that you're going to get your rims or your radio jacked every day of the week. Over here, though, is where the college kids, where the Mormon guys are at, and that's a safer area, right? That's where you want to go. Uh, or the Mormon guys are at for the party. Yeah, I was going to say. But anyway, like, it, they'll tell you, like, where the good areas are to go and where the ones to avoid are, and not, like, that kind of pays for themselves already. If they can stick you in the right area, because you're from out of town, bro. Even if you drove, like when I was in Washington, I got off the plane, I was freaking starving because I left at like four in the morning. I was running late, obviously. I didn't get the coffee. I didn't get my freaking breakfast burrito. I finally landed on me fucking starving. I'm like, dude, I need to get some food. And my cousin was like, well, I was like, pull over, dude. Like there's a Chick-fil-A. There's a freaking burrito place. There's this. And he's like, dude, we're not stopping here. Let's get it. Like, it's scary. It is, I don't even like driving this area. But to me, I was like, dude, I'll just walk in there. <laughs> You'll probably get stabbed, right? You want those people in your corner. Um, so a real estate agent can do that for you. Um, like, they can help They can help you find deals, like, on that MLS. Like, you, an outsider, you only have, like, information on Google or Zillow or Open Door or Redfin, that kind of stuff. But even that, like, it's not, it's not as accurate as you want. Because like Redfin and Zillow, they all feed off of different like softwares and their numbers most of the time are not as accurate as you want it to. Like if you were paying $12,000 for a house and you looked it up on Zillow and Zillow said it was worth 150,000 and you're like, dude, yeah, let's pull the trigger. So you buy this thing. Come to find out when the realtor like runs comps after you fix it up, they're like, no man, like Zillow was wrong. This house is only worth $70,000. So you did all that and you, you got to leave your money in there now until this house appreciates enough to get your money back out because like you trusted Zillow or Open Door or Redfin. Like these real estate agents has more accurate information at their fingertips than like Redfin and Zillow. Um, they'll tell you where to avoid, where not to avoid. 
what I learned is like, you want to be like super, super open with your goals and your vision with that real estate agent. Um, like if your goal, so I have a goal when I go to either Wichita or North Carolina, my goal, I want a hundred houses in five years. And like, I want to see like what that real estate agent's reaction is going to be. Like, I want to see like, if he says like, oh shit, dude, oh, that'll never happen. I won't even waste the time to tell him buy. Click. He's not the one for me. I want the guy that's like 100 houses in five years. Oh, yes, sir. Let's do it. Let's do it. Here's the plan. Here's how we're going to do it. Like, I, I want that guy, right? Um, so be open with your goals, what you want, your aspirations. Be open with it. Be honest with them. Um, honestly, like, expect to get a nobody. Like, expect to get like a brand new agent. Like, if, if, you call, like, if you called my team and you said, like, hey, man, uh, I'm from Ohio. I want to do some investing uh, investing in Arizona. I want to buy 100 houses in five years. I don't get those calls all the time. So I'd be like, yeah, okay, cool, man. Hey, uh, Braden, or one of my rookie agents, hey, come here and take this phone call. You got this investor guy that wants to buy a bunch of houses. Here you go. Go, go deal with him. So when I went to Ohio, I expected that. But, man, like, I know enough about the, the real estate industry and investing and like I, I kind of help teach this kid like how to handle an out-of-state investor and how to make like investing decisions so I really did a lot for his career on what I could teach him uh, but like expect to get like the rookie guy that's only done a few houses which is totally fine like the stuff that you learn from my investing class you know what to ask you know how to run a spreadsheet like again you can basically teach him to help you get what you want to get um, and like, let them make money too. So like, as a, as a real estate person here in Arizona, I could have asked for a referral fee on all the houses that I, that I bought out there where like an agent will make 3% on each side. So he'd make 3%, but of that 3% that he makes, I could have made, you know, 25, 35% off of what he made just because I'm an agent out here. But the house that I bought was $70,000. What's 3% of $70,000? Like two grand, 2,100? So like, am I really going to beat that kid up for, for 600 bucks? No, like let him get the whole 2,100. Yeah, and then like the next time you come around, like he went and found me more because he knows like he can make more money off of me because I'm not going to nickel and dime with you, right? you know? And I'm very specific with like what my buy box is. I, I emailed them like exactly like this is what I'm looking for. If you can find me houses in this buy box right here, I will I will buy every single one of them that you bring me, right? If they're out here, don't even bring them to me. I'm not going to look at them. They're not in my buy box. So he knew like if he found a 3, 2, 1200 square feet that I could, you know, net so much money from, I've got a buyer for it. Sam, here we go. Here's the numbers. The guy would I sent him a template. He would fill out all the information. He would do everything for me. He would fill out my spreadsheet with all the information that I needed. And then he would email it to me. I would look at it. Numbers look right. He would send me a couple pictures just because he thought that's what I needed to do. Great, man. Let's buy it. And I bought, I bought all three. Didn't even walk through them. Never even stepped foot inside the house. Bought all three of them, right? Because I had the buy box. I had the realtor. He knew what I wanted. He went and found it. Bought it. Why do you need to sit there and think about it? You've already thought about it. You've done your homework. You've done your research. It's in your buy box. Buy the thing. Move on. Um, yeah. So that's like the family friend and that's the realtor. Those are two very important people that you want on your team. Does anybody have any questions or concerns, comments about a friend, real estate agent? Can you do it without a real estate agent? Out of state? Like, honestly, it'd be very hard because, like, you would need to, one, you don't know that area. Two, like, you would almost need to jump on Zillow and then try to locate the owner and then have a phone call with that owner and then try to educate the owner that you're not, like, a phony guy, that you're actually going to buy the house. Like, it, you would make a 1,000 phone calls to his five phone calls, I guarantee. So it's just... Go, I would go through a real term first few. Uh, continuing to build your team, like the third most important guy, and the, like they're not ranked in order, but one of the three most important people in your in your team is your contractor, your handyman. 
Again, like you want a minimum of two of those people. <laughs> Why? Because like if one contractor is busy and he can't get to your house for three weeks, you need to have one or two more guys who's like, yeah, man, well, I can start it next week. Great. Boom. It's your job. Go do it, right? So you need multiple of those people. Again, like share your goals and vision with those. Like what's cool about a guy who maybe has like one or two people on his team and, and he can take down like a house or two a month, but then he's got a guy that's willing to buy two houses a month. Like you just doubled his business and it's like a guaranteed business. You really form like a partnership. You might even be able to get into business with that guy. Like he might need some capital and you're supplying him with all the leads, right? Like if he can only do 20 houses a year, those are the 20 that you're going to do anyway. So like, hey man, why don't I just buy into that business with you? And then if I'm slow for whatever reason, you can go work on other ones and I'll get you know 25% of the profits over here. But then once I buy the house, I'm pulling you back here. Like I have a brother, he was supposed to be here tonight, but he's not. But he, he runs our construction company down here. But the one of the rules is that if you know somebody on my team has a client who needs something repaired or fixed right away, like he is going to leave whatever job he's working on. I don't care if it's a million dollar job, he's gonna stop that. He's gonna come take care of my leaky toilet so I can clean his house. So like having the control and stuff over another construction company would be super solid, right? Um, I would interview him, ask some questions like how big you are, how many, how many employees do you have? How many jobs do you do a year? Like what size jobs do you do? Are you taking down just like remodels are you taking down new builds are you taking down subdivisions are you a commercial contractor like ask them that kind of information um obviously like are you licensed some states don't require you to be licensed ohio didn't require you to be a licensed um contractor like to be a like i'm a licensed contractor out there i had to fill out a quick form that was like hey what's your name and your address your social security number um and pay a $20 filing fee, I'm a licensed contractor in Ohio now. Like, so anybody and everybody out there can do it. But you wanna find out like what they had to do to get their license. Like, had I have known that, I'd be like, oh shit, okay, you guys like just let any weekend warrior build houses out there. So you know you're gonna come across some jacked up houses. So you might wanna find out like, hey man, like, what are you gonna do? Like, what did you have to do to become a licensed contractor out there? You know, here in Arizona, you got to take freaking blood work and sign away your firstborn. You got to pass like nine different astrology tests. It's just insane. It's stupid. Um, another thing you can do is like ask for references. Like, hey, man, you like some some people like you want to get with them, work with like other realtors in the area. Like if the contractor says like, oh, man, I work with um, like 10 other realtors. So like I know the last minute jobs you got to do. And what's cool is like, hey, man, you mind if I get two or three of those real estate agents phone numbers real quick like i want you to ask them about some other stuff oh yeah here it is we're gonna call them hey hey mary um talking with joe your contractor or whatever like what do you think of him how is he you know is he good is he is he expensive is he fast does he do good work you know what's good about him what's bad about him you want to know everything about that guy um take you know take pictures and videos of his past jobs or maybe he's on a job right now Hey man, you mind like FaceTiming me right now? Like show me what project you're working on. Like if a guy is, is too big and too busy, he probably won't have time for you. That's fine. Go to somebody else. Change somebody else's life, okay? So a guy that's going to like pay attention and walk through and FaceTime with you, that's probably a guy that's a little more invested in you too that will kind of pay you a little more attention because you're a big part of his success. That's who you want to partner with is the medium, smaller size guy who's really looking to move up and stay steady, partner with that guy. Um, they'll show you pictures, they'll do videos, they'll do FaceTime, all that stuff. One thing I learned right here, um, background checks, even on your even on your contractors. So a licensed agent, you have to have a, a background. You can't have a criminal record if you're gonna be a licensed real estate agent. But like a contractor, they don't do much of that stuff. So my contractor in Ohio, uh, I bought my second house, he flipped it for me. He would send me videos. He would take pictures. I think all in, I was like $20,000 to him. But then he's like, hey, man, do you mind if I personally rent this house out? The house that he flipped for me, he wanted to move into. I'm like, yeah, dude, great. I already got a renter. So right the day he's done, like he can already move in. I can start collecting income off of that property like right away. Like, yeah, dude, perfect. Sign the lease, boom. He's like, hey, man, 
I'm gonna send you out a out a deposit check on Saturday or whatever when we get in, blah blah blah. I'm out of town, but when I get back, I'll send your deposit check. We move in. So like Saturday, he moves in. He's like, hey man, I mailed the checks to you. I'm like, cool, great. You know, there's the keys. Help yourself. So two weeks later, comes by. I haven't received a check. So I call him, and we we talk like every every other day, you know. And um, hey. I didn't get a check yet. Oh, you didn't get a check? Well, I don't know. I don't know. My wife, maybe, maybe she wrote the address down. Oh, okay, cool, dude. A week later, hey man, I didn't get the check. Oh, dude, like uh, let me find my wife. She said something like the the I got the hard or not the hard money, I got the the money order, and the company is trying to reimburse me so that I can go get another one. Is it as another for the ride? So then, like six weeks later, you know, six weeks total. Like now, like he didn't pay the deposit. He didn't pay the first month's rent because supposedly those were the first two checks that he sent out. Well, finally, like, and I had no reason not to trust this dude, right? Uh, and his rent was going to be like 18 a month, 1800 a month. The deposit was first month. So there's 3,600 bucks. So now I'm bleeding into the second month and he's a week late on his rent now. So now 38 plus another 1700. 40 fit was at 5,500 bucks. So I was 5,500 bucks that he owes me. And I'm like, Hey man, like I haven't received the first two checks and now you're a week late on this check. Like, so now I'm like, okay, dude, like what's, what's wrong? Like there's something wrong here. And I didn't, I didn't put two and two together and stuff. Well, anyway, then he tells me, Hey man, I'll send you a check. I, now he's not answering his phone. Now he's only emailing me. Okay, and it takes like three days to get back. With me. Okay, this is weird, but for legal purposes, you're going to email me? Great, man. I would love to get all your shit right. <laughs> so I email right back. Yeah, I'd rather not have a phone call because all this shit is recorded, man. So I'm telling him all this stuff, and he's like, Well, if you wait till in two Fridays, I can pay you, I will pay you up current plus the whole next month, I'll pay you early. Okay, man. Last month, like I need it in two weeks, or like we're out. Two weeks game, nothing, I ain't get shit. Now he's $5,500 deep into me and I'm a week away from another $1,700 that he's gonna owe me. Now that's like 7,300 bucks that he's gonna owe me in like three months. So anyway, I ended up having to evict this guy. I called, I had to get represented with an attorney because I'm out of state and I am an LLC, I own it. So I had to get legal counsel. So I had to pay a thousand dollars to do that. I had to pay 500 bucks to have a guy go and deliver a letter. Well, the first letter he delivered was freaking wrong. I didn't put his and her name on it. So I had to send another one out there, paid another 500 bucks with the right letter on there. And finally, a month later, I, they finally got the guy kicked out. The house was a shit show. Like he had taken out the, um, he took the stove, took the stove, the range. I bought a brand new stainless steel range for that house. He took it. He told me later, like, hey man, the stove broke. What are you going to do? You're going to take in a small claims court and beat somebody up over 500 bucks? You're going to waste more money dealing with that stuff. And I was out like the $7,300 in profit that I should have had. Like, well, not profit because I had a mortgage at the time, but like just out all that freaking money. And that's like, a, that's the worst case scenario. That's the worst thing that I've ever come across in renting houses. I, I rent it a lot. So like do do like very good due diligence. Get on their Facebook page. Have them like you on like you need to be friends on Facebook or if they're not on Facebook or TikTok or whatever you need to know about. Them. You need to do your own research on them, but definitely get like a criminal background check. As easy as like doing through Google. Hey, criminal background check. And you put his name, his phone number, or address in there, and it'll pull up all the stuff. So I ended up doing that. Or my realtor in Ohio has this website he goes to, and he plumbed it. He sent it to me. He had like 10 different, 10 different felonies, drug charges. He's been evicted twice. Like, but I didn't know that. Like when I talked to the guy, he was, it was just like you. Like, he's a nice, nice freaking dude. And he he got me, man. He's he's slimy dude, man. Terrible guy. Uh, but anyway, had I done that, I think I'd have made different decisions, like moving forward. I wouldn't have let him rent my house. Um and what's cool too is like if you're a little unsure about, so you just met this guy, maybe you've never even met this contractor in person because I didn't fly out there till I had owned these houses three months. Two of them have already been remodeled. I'd already paid these guys, like I've never even seen them in person. 
The only thing I've gotten is like pictures, videos, and phone calls. So what I did is I was like, look, man, I don't, I don't feel comfortable like release like if if he wanted fifteen thousand dollars, I'm not going to give him fifteen thousand dollars, and I'm not going to give him a huge down payment up front. Like I'm going to give you something small to where like if you take my money and run, you took a thousand bucks. That's better than you paying him fifteen grand up front and then him running on the fifteen thousand, right? Uh, so you pay like pay him say like every Friday, but like small increments. So every Friday maybe it's a thousand bucks until he's done, and then you get like a big balloon payment at the end. But that way, like, and he has to like he has to FaceTime you so where you know like he didn't go to a different house and take a picture of a bathroom and text it to you and say like, hey, your bathroom's done. Give me that thousand bucks, and your bathroom still damn it looks like shit, right? So he has to FaceTime you, and then when. You know, hey, the kitchen's done. You see it? I just need the countertop. Oh, yeah, they're all in. Great. Okay, looks great. Hey, man, I'm going to Venmo you a thousand bucks right now. Great. So you make small increment payments to them. Uh, like utilize the technology, like FaceTime pictures, video calls, whatever you want to do. Um, I mean, that's, you can't really get like an in depth look at like underneath the kitchen sink and did the guy really put six screws in it or whatever. But like at least you can see like the kitchen cabinets are there and they're installed. Or, the the range and the hood are installed and everything looks good, right? Um, yeah, so use that. Any questions, comments? I know like none of this is like, you know, mind blowing, but it really lets you think like it's, it really is like possible and it's not as hard as one would think it is. Um, so like buy box, when, even if you're out of state, you still need to create a buy box. And again, if you go to like some of the first classes I did, I talked about, I think it's class two. Yeah. I talked about like what your buy box is and I really break it down on what, like for a beginner investor, what a buy box should be. Um, so like create your buy box, you know, create the, the financing where you get all the cash back, do your rental rates, your ARV. Does any of that sound familiar? Yeah. Right. So then you're basically taking the process that we talked about for investing in Arizona. You're going to take that same package, the exact same shit that we talked about over the last four weeks. And then you're just going to implement it in Wichita, Kansas or Georgia or Tennessee. Right. It's all it's all the same stuff. You're just a thousand miles away instead of being right here. Right. Um, yeah. Doing the same thing, just a thousand, thousand miles away. Um, I mean, as far as like out of state investing, because like we talked about all the other classes, I mean, that's, that's really like what it takes to be like an out of state investor. Because like, you know, how, now you just go get the financing with a hard money loan. It doesn't matter if it's Arizona or Tennessee or wherever. You still have to get financing for it. You still partner with somebody like on a private money loan and go out and buy a house out there. <clears throat> You might have to travel out there a little bit more, but you can even budget that in your flip spreadsheet. So like the spreadsheet, you would say like, hey, for the bathroom is X amount, flooring is X amount, paint is X amount, travel is X amount. Like if it's if it costs you $1,000 every time you go out there and you want to go out there every other month, budget $6,000 in there for travel. And then at the end of the day, if you can still make money on that property, pull the trigger out because you've already budgeted to go out there every other month. So go out there every other month and spend your thousand dollars to get there because you already have that budget for it. Somebody else is going to pay for that eventually. Right. So if that's what you got to do, do it. So, like, what do you think? Like, knowing what you know now, and I want you guys to be like open and honest, but like what, like what hesitations, if anything, or limitations do you think you have right now? Like that would prevent you from like doing out of state investing. Probably experience. Experience? Just the unknown. Right. Um, but if we found, like if you found like the right people, like if you found the right contractor, maybe your brother lives in that area and a really kick-ass real estate agent, would you feel better about making the flip? Making yeah, the investment? If you know somebody, yeah. If you know somebody? Okay. I think knowing people is like a huge, because like, yeah, what trust, if, trust me. Yeah, so we got to find, again, like if we went back three slides, what's the most important thing in business? People, 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 right? So if we found those right people, 
whether your house was in Tennessee or Flagstaff, like what would make you more comfortable about it being in Flagstaff? Just when I'm present. So just because you're there. Like, see, I mean, you put hands on it. Right. But would you physically like, and I mean, you're a handy guy, but if like, if you weren't, <laughs> like you're a handy guy, but like, could you do anything and everything that has to do with the house? Or would you still have to go find somebody to help you repair it? Me personally? Yeah. Okay. You could probably do everything? I could pretty much do everything. Okay. But as long as I have somebody, like like for me, I got a piece from Utah. I got a family in Utah. I don't know what the is there, but my brother used to flip out. He used to like, so he didn't even afford like a piece to do it. In Utah, it's so those are outskirts of the bigger city. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about again, you're talking about your brother. Right. Your brother is a person, right? But what I'm trying to say is like whether you're in Flagstaff and the house is in Flagstaff, like you wouldn't that's like you would still have to call somebody to do the work. Sure. Right. Like not everybody is as handy as us, you know. But again, like what if what if the electrical panel like to the house? was too old, outdated, but you didn't know it until you bought it. And then you went to go uh, get a permit or an inspector happened to walk by and go, bro, that electrical panel is outdated. Do you know how to rewire like an entire house and an entire panel and get it all done legally? And like get a permit and all that? No, you're probably gonna have to find somebody else. So, right, so what I'm trying to, like what I'm trying to get across is like, it's, it's a phone call and it's a person. Right. So what does it matter if your phone call goes to somebody and, Flagstaff or your phone call goes to somebody in Tennessee. Yeah, it doesn't. doesn't matter, right? Like at the end of the day, your phone call is just reaching far, but you're not going to go and do all the work, whether it's in Flagstaff. Right. Like I get the, I want to get you guys comfortable past the, the myth that like I have to be able to look at it, see it, touch it, feel it every day. Like even in your first ones, you're going to want to, like you don't, you don't have to. If you want to see progress, hey man, text me, call your brother or whoever lives there, your, your family member. Hey, bud, like I missed my contractor today. I just really want to see like the progress. I'll buy you a six pack when I come into town next month, but will you go snap like 10 pictures of the kitchen for me and then text them to me? Like, can you get a good enough view of what the house looks like that way? Yeah, I mean, it's not the same as being there, but like if there's money and opportunity to be made that way, like don't let it limit you is what I'm trying to get at. Like, you're still going to make a phone call. Who cares if it's a contractor in Flagstaff or a contractor in Tennessee? It doesn't really matter, right? You're still going to make a phone call and find a contractor. You have to find the right people in Flagstaff, whether you're there or not. You still got to find the right people, you know? Uh, so, who like, who is interested in investing out of state? Are you guys invested, interested in it at all? I, I mean, you don't have to be. I was because I see, like I was telling you earlier, the uh, uh, Facebook page, the Burr page. Yeah. You see the, the properties that people buy, mm -hmm. and then they list all their, you know, what the purchase price, the cost, money invested, rate of return, right? The rate of rate of return on investment. Right. And I, I didn't realize that there were houses out there for fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. But. We, I mean, we grew up in a state where everything's always been higher. So we yeah. know that that's our reality in Arizona. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. It's going to get worse and worse. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we've talked about that. Too. Like yeah. Both of us rent right, right now. Mm -hmm. And we're just really trying to get out of that. But if you look around, it's just like you were saying earlier, possibility of owning the home in Arizona is just getting hard. Like, making $100,000 a year right. is shit anymore. Right. And that's like like I look at my dog's like median, never buy house. Median to low income yeah. now. It's it's sad, but like what the statement you just said, like I yeah. scouts on her, I believe that to be true. Yeah. And like my 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 daughter will be 24 on Monday and we got to buy house. The only way to figure out if you can buy houses. Yeah. That you're never gonna be able to buy houses. 100 percent crazy. I agree with that. So yeah, I, I just didn't realize that you can buy houses for that cheap in these um the flyover states, yeah, you know, and that's like 
Well, people who live there, I mean, there's people that don't want to live in Arizona or a huge city like Phoenix. Like, you want to go to a decent sized city, but like, you don't need to be in New York, Phoenix, Los Angeles. You can be in Indianapolis. You can be in Cleveland, Ohio. You can be in the areas where you can commute to work. And I bring, I, I say Tennessee for the buddy of mine. Those on the coast area, which is about seven acres for 150k, right? And he's 20 minutes outside of uh, Nashville. Yeah, and Nashville's a decent sized city, isn't it? As big as Phoenix, no, is there opportunity out there? There's a lot of work there, yeah. You know, and there's people there that can do the work, right? What, why aren't we outside of Nashville, Tennessee, right now? I've been, I love Nashville, yeah, it's cool, it's a cool little city, yeah. Especially with like COVID, what COVID did to the world is it told like huge corporations that people could work from home. Nobody has to be 20 minutes from the office. And, well, people still do, but like there's a lot of people now that are like, I can work from anywhere. So why not go where the houses are freaking cheap? Yeah, you don't have to go into an office somewhere. Not anymore now. Yeah. I don't know why you're living in Arizona. Like, I mean, well, I mean, it, yeah, Arizona is beautiful. It's great. The weather used to be the cool politics, but that's kind of shit red, but. No. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Arizona is going to be super, super tough. And like, it's it's almost like a hard, like a, a reality that you're going to have to come with. Like if, if you didn't buy in sooner, it's either going to take more to get in or you're you're not a buyer in Arizona. You need to start, you need to start looking somewhere else, you know? Now, so if you guys wanted to, Neil, you know, do you want, like you guys want to? I know no. you talked about I'm doing so like what like my biggest pet peeve the the thing that like really like if you want to like can piss me off is like sit here and keep telling me that you want to do something the the worst thing is to sit here and go like oh yeah man I really want to invest out of state or I really want to do this or I really want to do that and you don't put any action behind it there's nothing that pisses me off more like I don't want. I get to the point where it's like I don't even want to talk to you anymore because you have all these pipe dreams. Like, oh yeah, man, I want to move to I want to move to Georgia. I want to do this. I want to buy a hundred houses. Fucking do something about it, right? Do something about it. How do you? You know, we talked about this in one of our last classes, but I want to go back. How do you eat an elephant? One bite. At one bite at a time. How do you buy one hundred houses in five years? One at a time. One at a time. Can you not buy a house? Yes, and if you can buy one, can you buy two? If you can buy two, can you buy four? If you can buy four, can you buy 12? If you can buy 12, how come you can't buy 24, right? So like you got to come all the way back though to how you eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So what do you have to do tomorrow? What are you going to do for me tomorrow that is going to get you one bite closer to taking down your first investment property? And I don't want you to just tell me some shit. If you're going to tell me, just be honest with me. If you're not going to do anything about it, tell me, Sam, I ain't going to do anything about it. I'll just quit wasting my time with you. But if you're like, Sam, tomorrow, I'm going to devote 30 minutes. I'm going to put in my calendar. 30 minutes, I'm going to jump on Google, and I'm going to figure out where Ford is building their next plant, where Amazon is building their next warehouse, where Intel is building their next chip plant. And it, for 30 minutes, that's all I want. For 30 minutes, I'm going to, I'm going to pick the top three cities that show the most amount of growth in the near future. And then leave it alone. That's all I want you to do that one day. But then day two, I want you to say, what's my next bite? What's my second bite? So I would say day two is like, okay, narrow it down to three cities. I'm gonna start with one city, take Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, I'm gonna go to Louisville, Kentucky. Now I'm gonna try to learn everything I can about that city. What the average age of people is like, what? Community sizes are what the house size, what the median price point is. Like, I want to know everything about that city. Okay. And then for 30 minutes, then I want you, to, I don't want you to touch it the rest of the day. Then day three, I want you to take your third bite. Okay, Louisville, Kentucky, I know everything about it. I can find you want me to find you an agent. You just tell me what city and where at. I will find you the best agent out there. I will find you the team leader of the biggest team in Keller Williams in that area. And I will kick you the phone number and you can call the people. Then I want you to interview the agent. Great. That's all I want you to do. That day. Fourth day, I want you to in there, be the agent again, tell them where you're at, and like say, hey, man, I need to find contractors. You know people? And then your agent's going to find you three or four contractors. And that's all I want you to do that day. And then day five, 
I want you to find the family friend in that area. Day six, I want you to find a contractor. I want you to interview two or three of them. Day 10, I want your, your real estate agent to start finding you freaking houses. By day 30 of that agent trying to find you houses, you better have found one to put an offer in on already. Like that's how fast, that's how easy it is. Like from starting tomorrow, you could have a house under contract in 30 days. Like you could have the agent, you could have the city, you could have the contractor, you could find the house, put the offer in on it and wait for it to close. You could have a house in 60 days by doing one bite, one small step, 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes a day working on out of state investing, you will have a house in 60 days. You can, I guarantee it. <clears throat> and what would make that faster? Maybe what if you put an hour every day? What if you put two hours every day? Like how much time you have, how much success you want to have, and how fast you want that success is the only thing holding you back right now. You know, you went through all the classes, like you know about all the financing and stuff. You guys can we'll get those uh, Nick and make sure that she emails them out to you guys. She emailed me today on all of them. Um, yeah. So like you can go back and watch these videos because they're all recorded. The Zooms are all recorded. Uh, and if you want to like meet up or whatever and talk a little bit more, you know, you can text me, email, Facebook me anytime and I'll get back as fast as you can. But like how many people work from a calendar? <clears throat> Like, how, do you use a calendar every day? Like, faithfully? Like, if it's not, like, I'm talking, if it's not in your calendar, it does not exist. Like, I want it down to, like, every half hour, you have your shit together. And you have that? That's freaking I am, awesome. I am the calendar keeper. I remember my friends to the bowl, even. That I, is, what are we doing two weeks from now? Yes. That is amazing, because that, like, if it's not in your calendar, I promise you, you will not do it. And if you put it in your calendar, the chances of you actually doing that are go up like exponentially. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to sit there and do it because it's easy to just swipe that reminder away, right? But if you have, if it reminds you at 11 o'clock from 11 to 11.30, the most important thing in my world is to find three cities that Ford is going to be developing. That is the most important thing for that 30 minutes. There's a book called The One Thing. Way to read that one too. The one thing. I think you have a thing. Yeah. Really how to list of books. Yeah, it'll take you right to like the Amazon link or the buy link on some of those. Even that Dan Sullivan book is on there. The one thing really like it breaks it down to you will not do like if if your calendar says from eleven to eleven thirty, I am working on finding a city. That book really helps you hone in on what is the most important thing in that in your world at that one time. The most important thing in your world that you are only focused on is finding that city that you're going to go invest in. And then the next day, your one most important thing at that time is finding an agent in that city. And you will find that you will get shit done exponentially quicker and better and faster. That's a good book. The only thing you're wasting right now is time. Every day, so every day that you don't like work on this, Nate, is one more day that you're not going to have a $6,000 passive income. Like that's one more day that you guys have to rent. That's one more day that like you have to wait to be financially free. That's one more day. Like, and you just keep saying, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Well, how many tomorrows does it take to be a year? Right? Like how many times have we said like, I'll do that shit tomorrow. And next thing you know, you wake up and you're 10 years older. And then you're going to be fucking pissed when you see me going like, dude, I'm living this, I'm doing this. And like, oh, you're going to watch my Facebook. Oh, I bought another one, bought another one. You're going to go, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I bought another one. And you're going to be 10 years later, I'm going to have my 100 houses sitting on the beach somewhere like that. And you're going to be back at work. Yep, okay, boss. Yep, I'll take my lunch right now. Because you kept saying like, oh, I'll do that shit tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. You need to do it right now. You need to do it right now. Like if you want to do something, whether it's in state, out of state, it doesn't matter. But you need to start putting an account, you need to start budgeting time for it. You know, I know like you work, you know, labor and stuff all day. Nate, you do too. But like <clears throat> there's not a set. How much TV do you watch tonight? Four hours. Another two two hours? hours? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so what if you took half that? What if you spent one hour instead of watching TV, you spent one hour on building your freaking empire, building your wealth? Like if I try, I try a minimum one hour every single day, I'm doing something with investing. 
every single day. But that is like really what I want to do. So I make it a point. That is the one thing that is most important to me from 11 to 12 is that I work on some sort of investing. I don't care what it is, like another out-of-state house, a feed store, figuring out how I can do a better flip or whatever it is. I'm, I'm researching something. I did that at night. Yeah, every time I leave here, I do it. Mm -hmm. so. Try to make like a routine out of it. Try to make a habit of it. Every night from five to six, like, or when I'm, when we're eating dinner, hey man, like you can eat and be plugging away on the computer. And then for that one hour, that's all you do. But then when that hour is over, you're done with it. You close the laptop and you watch TV, right? Because there's a thing of burnout. You can get burned out. You can get so entwined in this and spend so much energy on this. And then you get so pissed off because like you might look at a hundred houses, you might cop a hundred houses and say no to 99 of them. And then finally you're going to buy one, right? Like just because the dude found me one at $12,000, that might not have been a good investment. For you. Like you're going to do this a hundred times before you find a house. It, it might take you six months before you find a house. That's okay. But like, if you don't do like one step every day, you're not, you're not going to get there. So you just keep prolonging that six months. Every day you don't do nothing. You're still you're still six months away, six six months away. But if you did that, you'd be five months and, and thirty days away, five months twenty nine days away. Okay. Anyway, dude, this stuff like just excites me. It's awesome. So, I mean, I would say investing. I throw a lot at you guys. Yeah, I mean, any questions, comments, concerns. You think I'm full of shit or fake it? <laughs> I mean, would you not learn to do the last day first, or would you do right one week? So, like, so me personally, when I started, and it's a rough time because when I started, like, houses were still affordable, like, 15 years ago, right? Like, if you found a good one in Arizona, yes, I would take it down. But would if I had an hour every day to devote to investing, I would cut that in half, and I would. 30 minutes in state, 30 minutes out of state. Yeah. And again, like if you feel unsure, we might we might do like one more class, maybe like if like I, I might like run through like a comp and run through like a whole kind of like scenario, like a mock, like a mock deal, you know, on like how I do it, why I do it, and everything. Um and then, like, I want to offer, like, the people that have made it through all the classes and been here, like, I would partner with you with, for, like, a small percentage of the outcome. So, for, like, 15% or whatever it is, like, we can work a side deal. Like, we don't need to work a deal here in front of everybody. But, like, Neil, if you want to take down a house and the first one we could find was out of state and you found it, like, you could partner with me on it. And, like, I would kind of mother hen you and, and make sure, like... I would probably take the lead on the first one and just kind of fill you in. But then the second one, like you would do it and I would just kind of be there watching your step. Oh, no, no, come back here now. Okay, there you go. Yep, keep going. Keep, oh, no, no, go back here. Okay, yep, yep. And then you feel a little more confident and then it's until you start taking some down. And man, I you take down like two or three, like your first one, you'd be nervous. You'd be like, oh, what the fuck am I doing? But like the second one, you're like, oh, what am I doing? Man, come on. Third one, you're like, shit, kick the door in, dude. And then now, like, when you start hitting, like, 40 years, you'll buy him sight unseen because you're just so confident at it that you're just, like, the dude sends you an email or a text message, and you're like, all right, man, I'll send you 60 grand in the mail. So yeah. your assistant, hey, mail this dude a check for 60 grand, go. When you've got all these properties, are you, do you hire, a, say, you buy 10 houses in Wichita, 20, whatever it is? Are you using a property management group to manage them for you at that point? Yeah. I mean, you're not gonna you're gonna be on the phone all fucking day if you're yeah trying to do you know collect rent and repairs and all that shit. Yeah, that's all you can be doing. Yeah. So like you can handle like if, if that's all your properties are, you I think you could easily handle like five. Um, you know, you build them right, you shouldn't have to go there all the time. If something happens, like you just call your handyman, he goes out and fixes the toilet or the doorknob, right? Uh, but like you start getting over five, it starts to become more of a job. And then that's when I would start negotiating with different property management companies out there. Like a guy who just has one house, you're not a big, you're not a big hitter for, for them. You're, you're just another number. But if you're a guy that rolls in with like 10 and then they see that you're like freaking buying up the world, 
You can really start negotiating with those people. Yep. So yeah, I would you budget you budget one month of mortgage for property management fees, and you budget one month a year in your mortgage for repair costs. So you basically have 10 months to make your money because those other two months you've already budgeted for management fees, which is property management. And you budget one month, say 1500 bucks in repairs for that year. Per property. Per property, yep. Now, if you don't spend it, great. You didn't spend it. I highly recommend that like each house you save about $10,000 in a savings account before you start pulling from it. Like even your... Even your monthly payment, like if you're making three hundred dollars passive, throw it in a savings account. Just keep throwing it in there. Do you start a a new? You just wrap all these under one LLC. So here in Arizona, each house has its own LLC. Okay. Uh, in like if you're going to go out of state, I would probably group them up. Like if you're going to buy a hundred, you don't want to have to have a hundred LLCs. It's just you're never going to find a tax guy to take you on. You're just going to be a fucking nightmare. Right. Um, I would group them up in like tens. So like I, I would form um, one, two, three Main Street LLC and put 10 houses in there. And once I got to 11, I would start another LLC and put those in there. LLC protects you if something happens, I can only go after what that LLC owns. So here in Arizona, like I didn't want to group them all in one because like, you know, we own seven houses and they probably average like 500 or 3.5 million dollars if it, unfortunately a kid drowns or something now i'm gonna get sued you're gonna get sued i don't want them to be able to come after all my 3.5 million i want them to come after my 400 thousand. worst case scenario dude okay take the house you know whatever i got more yeah. you don't want to LLC for residents here for a house down here just because the price point is higher out there like Somebody sues you for your ninety thousand dollars house, like yeah, it sucks, but there's worse things that can happen. They can take your six hundred thousand dollars house down here. Cool. Guys, that's all I got. So, what do you? I'm, I'm at a point right now. I'm, I'm going to be. I was looking at purchasing something in black just for myself, but I also have really cheap rent. And uh, buy a house somewhere else for 60, 70 grand. You know, should I just hold out and not buy here? Yeah, I think with the market going down, I mean, the flag's not bad because I can always rent. Mm -hmm. I think it's every day, you, you always rent the flag, either students or tourism or season, seasonal visitors, you know what I mean? Whether it's an Airbnb or long term rental, there's always going to be somebody there. Mm -hmm. But the cost, and the way that the mortgage is going to be, you're not trying to, I probably wouldn't make a ton of money monthly on it, which I'd have to wait for the market to reverse. Ah, like, I mean, if you buy it right, like we talked about, like negotiating the buy, like you make your profit in the purchase. So, like, if you negotiate somebody down on a house from he wants 100, but if you get him down 20,000 down to 80, like that's a huge chunk of money. All your profit is in the buy. Um, like it's really like what your liability is and how much money you have to play with. I personally don't like people renting. I think it's like a, I think it's like a, it's it's not a very good like financial decision because like it's a hundred percent loss. You don't you don't get anything from it, right? Like when when you move out, let's say you rent a house for five years, does that does oh, that right. landlord say, hey man? Take take uh, take twenty percent of my equity. No, oh. you're out all that money, right? So I I like to stop the bleeding and get a house. Now, if you had if you had like a hundred thousand dollars and you want to do like out of state investing, let's say you had a thousand dollar rent, you said it's cheap or whatever. Let's say it's a thousand bucks. I don't know what it is, but you could take that thousand bucks and invest it out of state and make two or three thousand. Is it better for you to to take your hundred grand and buy a house here? To save a thousand bucks or take the hundred grand, go out there and make two or three thousand bucks. Right. right. Okay. That's the one time I'll say, okay, Nathan, I'll let you rent because you took that money and now you're making three thousand, which is going to pay for your rent over here. But once that, once you get your money back and you're making three grand, you're going to, you're going to buy a house. Right. Like
you're you're done right there. Is it? Yeah. There you go. 950 actually cheap. Yeah. That is very cheap. You can't do that down here, do you? Yeah. No. Uh and if I move, I'll be playing triple that. So that's why I'm kind of like. But they can always bump it up, man. Like once your lease is done, like they, they could easily yeah. I mean I'd rather own. I would rather have you. Yeah, yeah. I mean obviously renting is money away. Yeah. It really is. I mean, yeah, you get a you get a place to live and stuff, and maybe some people you have back credit and you don't make enough money or whatever, but we need to start looking at what it takes to buy a house. Because then you can use the equity in that house to like you could buy a fixer up or I figured my my plan was you know they've talked about this after, but my plan was to buy find a fixer townhouse because you can buy a single family home in Flagstaff insane. Yeah. You get the townhouse a little bit cheaper, they're easier, like what I was talking to you earlier about um so remodel it and then rephrase it and pull that money in and then get started. So the thing with townhouse, and again, like on the on some of the first oh, classes, like I talk about single family versus like condo or whatever, right? Like condo doesn't appreciate as fast. And it's really like narrows your your window. Not not there are people that like townhouses, but it's a smaller percentage. The majority of the people, like 90% of the people, want at least a three bedroom, two bath. So like you want to buy something where the money's at. Or where the people want to go. Yeah, but if he's in, I mean, in flag, if he's looking for, you know, turn it into a rental, probably should get inside. Probably yeah. more realistic. Just you got to make sure the town home, like the HOA fees, allow for like rentals and allow for college kids. That See, kind of thing. Right? That's the thing is like, I could Airbnb the shit out of it. And your profit margin on the Airbnb up there is pretty good mm -hmm. from what I've researched. And they have no intentions of implementing laws like Scottsdale just did. Yeah. Right, because a lot of the tax, a lot of the revenue is comes from out of towners. So, and and college kids from out of state with parents in California have a ton of money. So they, I don't, I haven't seen anything with any laws or anything like that being changed to right. limit to limit that. So, so let me ask you a question, Nate. Like in the last like four sentences that you said, like did you learn anything? Like you basically just you basically just said what you should be doing. Yeah. Like you basically just laid out like your business plan in like four cents. It's kind of what I'm thinking. I just trying to kind of like so like, so like you that. thought about it. Your plan is right. Like you told me high level what your plan was. Hey, I've done some research on Airbnb on the townhouses. I can make a shit ton of money. Yeah. Why the fuck aren't we doing it, dude? Well, like why aren't we? You just said it, dude. And I just told you, like, the one thing that pissed me off more than most people just tell me, like, bro, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I'm not picking on your name. Oh, no. I'm just... picking on you. I love you to death and you're a big dude. I don't want to. I will kick your ass, but I don't want to have to. But what I'm saying is, like, dude, you, you know what to do, man. You know what to do. Not like the next step is taking your first freaking bite, dude. I'm telling you. Because tomorrow, when you don't take it, it's going to, tomorrow's going to turn into three years. And then you're going to be like, I'm not going to do these for the next three years. And you're like, fuck, oh, man, I should have done it three years. How are we going to be in three years? 44. 44? I'll have a place before by mid spring for sure. How are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to start. What's your plan? So, what are you doing tomorrow to get there? Is it in your calendar? Your girlfriend's giving you the fucking stink. <laughs> That's, 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 that's the thing is the I, I gotta get I really need to get better with my like saying organized like with the calendar. Mm -hmm. I actually bought a small planner, but that's just I mean that's just you know I gotta create that habit. So 100. Well, you have to do something. That's the biggest. That is the biggest takeaway out of all these investment classes. And I said it before. It it's just do something. Do something. You have to take one step. If you don't take a step forward, it is a 100% guarantee you will not get where you want to go. If you take a step forward, you have a 50% chance that it is the right direction. You have a 50% that it's the wrong direction. So let's say we got to go back here. 
But what did you learn by taking the wrong step? You take the other one. The fucking place to go. I went to Ohio. I invested a shit ton of money, and it like it didn't go the way I wanted. So now I'm doing this. But then the shit that I learned from Ohio, the money that I'm gonna get from it, I'm gonna go like this yeah. tomorrow. So like I could have kept here. I could have kept doing this band aid bullshit in Ohio, and like every six months done this. But I had to come here to learn, like, hey, get your money, do this, find the right people. Now I'm fucking sprinting. I guarantee, dude, like, I will have 20 houses by this time next year. Guarantee. And it's all written, like, there's no lies here. I'm going to do the same shit. I do this every day. I do the same stuff. But it's just do, do something. Quit, like, quit talking. Stop talking. Don't even tell me that shit. Anymore. Don't even talk to me until you have done something, dude. You know what to do, bro. You know what to do. Just said, I need to buy a town home in Flagstaff because I can make a shit ton of money. Go. Let's go do it. Go do it. Or you find that Flagstaff isn't a place to go. Like I found recently that Arizona, you can't do a, a buy and hold in Arizona as an investor because the interest rates are so fucking high. It takes you out of it. I'm not a buyer in Arizona and I am an investor. I am not a buyer in Arizona right now. I cannot buy. The interest rate, just, it takes me out of it. I can do flips because I don't, I don't hold the note for 30 years. I, I hold a, a higher interest rate for three months while I'm flipping it. And then I'm going to sell that shit and make 40 grand. And I'm gonna take the 40 grand and, and, and go somewhere else with it. Like there's still opportunity in Arizona, but they're they're it, it's getting tough, it's getting harder. And it's getting like so hard that like, yeah, Neil wants to take one down, but like I want to take a bunch down. So I have to get fed first before I'm gonna go to kick some to Neil, you know, like that we gotta start branching out. How much are you putting down on a hard money? Like 10 to 20 percent, 20 percent normally max. But like you create a relationship with the same dude, he'll start lowering your down payment. Yeah. The people. I don't know if I don't know if you saw that earlier. You probably don't have it. Yeah. Probably would recommend doing those if you don't have a with people in place already in a certain area. So you yeah, get your team ready. Keep right? the ball rolling before you actually buy it. Here's a short window to yeah, get your get your team ready first. And then go go buy the house. Don't buy the house and then go get your team because yeah. you're right. You're you're chewing away at a high interest rate every single day. Get your team lined up to where like you're ready to go. Yeah, I got two electricians. I got two painters. Or I got one. I got two general contractors. All right, I'm ready to buy. Turn your real estate agent loose. Hey, shh, get out there. Go we'll find me a house. Hey, find me a house. Great. Take it down, boys. What do you? Put most of your money in, into when you're when you're doing a remodel or you're, when you have to overhaul it. Kitchens, bathrooms are the most expensive areas. Now, like your roof, your AC, and your you know your your sewer and stuff. Like depending on the age of the house, that can be expensive. Uh, but like upgrades, your kitchen is gonna you know, kitchens right now even for like a cheap house is is gonna run you fifteen eighteen thousand dollars. Like that's for a four hundred thousand dollar house. You're more expensive, and like I, I haven't invested in million dollar houses yet to flip. My that that's out of my buy box. I don't want to take on that risk, so I I don't know. I you could blow fifty to seventy five thousand in a kitchen, but like, I, like I know people that take down million dollar houses, and that return is huge. You know, like for me making forty on a four hundred thousand dollar house, they're making two hundred on a two million dollar. Like, yeah, you're making two million dollars or two hundred thousand, but bro, your risk is two million. Woo. Probably these quicker. Cash in hand. Yeah, I might be able to turn two or three of them faster and actually make one per day or whatever you want to call it for a house. There's a deal. It's just if you don't take a step, you're never gonna get a deal. You're never gonna go. Anywhere. It's a great question, though. Hey, the guys on Zoom, are you guys still awake? I got nothing to do. <laughs> you guys got any questions? I don't even know if they're still there. 